Hey, Alien Frequencies Open, and welcome to Star Trek Discoverage, the live podcast that boldly goes into excruciating detail about this week's episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. I'm your host, Aaron Coker, a.k.a. Caliban, and there is nothing more dishonorable than a Klingon dentist. Joining me on the show, as usual, <laughs> is my co-host. She's also the co-host of the Generations Geek podcast, a more or less family-friendly celebration of geekdom. It's Ella Pearson. Ella, welcome back to Discoverage. Thank you. Ella, you're you're in a new uh, you got a new background on. Yeah, I'm I'm dog sitting my friend's like Texas street dog. Oh, and Ooh. I and I love the dog. He's very well behaved, but <laughs> he does look like he came from the streets of Texas, and he does look like it. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm thinking more like uh, Houston, less Austin. Maybe he's a little guy. He can maybe he's get, he has been giving me this look all night. <laughs> what he are you know doing? Why I'm here. Oh, you want to come here? You want a treat? Come here. Oh, he doesn't want to. No. <laughs> he is. He's a little nervous. I think notoriously he, shy. He's like, street why dogs. Is this, yeah, he's like, why is this lady here? Exactly. <laughs> all right. That's how we made it on the streets. Yeah. Right. You have to be careful of he who you talk to about Star Trek. Camera. Uh, yes. Well, also returning to the show tonight, my co-host on the Just Enough Show podcast. She's also the host of the Sailor Noob podcast. She's a frequent enterprising individuals and Discoverage guest. It's Mika and Hana. Mika, welcome back to Discoverage. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. And I just mentioned that you are the host of a Sailor Moon podcast. And of course, uh, just in the past week or two, there was a huge, huge news story in the world of Sailor Moon fandom. The fact that the fabled Saban Moon had been found. Can you yes. tell us about that? Uh, yeah. So... Back in the olden days, uh, when we didn't know if we were going to get a Sailor Moon dub or not, um, they tried to get the rights to do a mixed media uh, Sailor Moon American version, which would be um, a live action when they are in their their school uniforms and then cartoon uh, cartoons when they're superheroes. Okay. So kind of like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, except cartoons. Right. Uh, <laughs> Instead of becoming Japanese or, or whatever. Right. Exactly. Um, and it was a big deal because for the longest time, uh, all we had was this music video that was like two minutes. And so it was this mysterious uh, pilot episode of what could have been and uh this youtuber she was really good at her research and she found it at the library of congress of all places oh wow it's always yeah. in the last place you look i guess yes yeah. okay and so it was like the hugest deal and everybody watched it and ever there's memes everywhere and like i'm glad it's out there but it's kind of like the hype, it doesn't exactly live up to the hype. I have to oh, say, not good. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, it's really bad, and like <laughs> maybe it's like good that that it's so bad. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's enjoyable in that regard. Okay. So yeah, if you're a Sailor Moon fan, uh, I would say check it out. Yeah, only if you're a Sailor Moon fan, maybe. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> or if you're just very curious. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I, you know, it, it's probably good that it never became a thing because it's so bad. But, you know, worse things have led to to bigger things. You know, the um, the initial uh, Power Ranger show like wasn't great. It was kind of silly, uh, sure. but it led to, you know, the long running franchise, a couple of movies. And so if that had been picked up and gone to market, you know, there might be a big American sort of aspect or version of Sailor Moon. Kind yeah, of like I in mean, Community when they uh, when they have the uh, Luke Perry becomes the uh, the inspector or whatever Inspector Space Time. right the the and it's a, just Doctor a Who total travesty yeah <laughs> I mean I think it would have been interesting and I probably you know would have watched it I just like I'm glad that we did get the dub and we did get the sub and yeah. like that that exists. Yeah. Because that would make me really sad if it didn't exist. If that was all, all that we had. Yeah. 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 Well, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, this is the part of the show where we usually talk about the news in the world of Trek. But now I have you both trapped. They were all deceived. <laughs> 
because we could talk about Lord of the Rings, which there's all of there's nothing really to talk about. But the uh, episode, the first episode of Rings of Power is available right now, I believe. The first two, right? Uh, yeah, the first two. Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously we're doing this, but uh, we'll have something to say about it uh, next week. But uh, as we talked about last week, looking forward to it. Don't want to make this a Lord of the Rings show. But I was thinking about the idea of Star Trek and the idea of Tolkien and how they both are um, it's kind of positive message genre fair. You know, there is uh, bold deeds going on and there are battles and fights and things, but they're really both about, you know, trying to make or maintain a, um, a higher society, a better society. So I don't think that we're totally uh, off to talk about Lord of the Rings once in a while. I think you're I allowed. Think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, on Mika and I's podcast, uh, Just Enough Trope, uh, last week we talked about The Lord of the Rings uh, as a run-up to our review of The Rings of Power, which will be coming yes. next week. And we had a segment called Lord of the Questions, where Mika, <laughs> Mika was allowed to, to ask any question that she had about the world of uh, Tolkien and the Legendarium, and I tried to answer them if I could. And the big question was, will there be werewolves? And... Where are the unicorns? That was a big one, too. Why are there no unicorns? I think that's fair. I think both those are fair. I think Shadowfax could have been a unicorn. Right, yeah. Just stick a horn on oh, there. I mean, he basically is. Right? Magic he, horse, he, he basically is. The and he's Lord like of gorgeously unicorns. white. And it's like... <laughs> yes. Like all good like, things. All right. <laughs> like all good things in Middle Earth, he's white. So let's, <laughs> oh let's look at that. Oh, my goodness. All right, come on. Let's look at that. Right. I did have one uh, news item I want to talk about, and that is uh, the departure of director Matt Shackman from Star Trek IV to do another four-related movie, The Fantastic Four. Up to this point, Star Trek IV had been greenlit. They had announced you know, months ago that they were moving forward, and Matt Shackman, director and producer of the WandaVision series, would be the director and help develop it. But he has now uh, departed from that project, and we're working on... Uh, Fantastic Four, now that John Watts, uh, director of Spider-Man, has left that project. So, angry about not getting Star Trek Four. happy that we're going to get, you know, there's, we're moving forward on a Fantastic Four movie. Thoughts? I just feel Weird bad swap. for, yeah, yeah, I feel bad for Star Trek I only four. do four related projects, they have to have a four in them, so. <laughs> I feel bad for Star Trek Four. Uh, I feel like people are just leaving the project left and right. And like, it's like, I just really do feel like, is this movie ever going to get made? And I don't understand it because like, I think that the hunger is there. Like people want more JJ track. So yeah. what is, what is the big problem? Why, why can't we make this happen? Why won't JJ direct one of these things? Right. Like, oh, yeah. Is it because, <laughs> well, hey, it made a lot of money and it is technically well reviewed, but is it because Into Darkness is seen as a weaker effort? Is it because he had to, okay, come back and fix Star Wars and everybody hated the last Star Wars? Uh, and so he's a little gun shy or phaser shy, as the case may be. And um, well, the, you know, Cloverfield gate. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, he's just sort of like, you know, uh, letting other people work in the Cloverfield shop. Uh, he's producing, but not necessarily a part of uh, Mission Impossible. And so it's like, hey, you want to do a movie guy? Like, come on back. Do a, do a Star Trek four. That would get it made. I would take a J.J. I Star love IV. that first movie so much. Yeah. I don't care what anyone's. I love that. It's a, a, good, a good, solid, fun movie. Yeah. Like, it I would love movie. another one. Yeah. And we all know Star Trek four is the best movie of the original series movies. So uh, this that's true. Four, yes, Man, but big shoes to fill. To be, this is good. Exactly. Yeah. So Just I don't know. I'm silly. I wish uh, Mr. Shackman uh, all the best for his new project. Uh, no, no plague on both your houses. But gosh, it seemed like we were getting really close, and then just pulled away. Football comes away at the last second again. So. Uh, but if there is any new development on Star Trek Four, we, of course, will have it here on this show. But tonight, 
We're talking about something else. We're talking about the second episode of the third season of Star Trek Lower Decks. It's an episode called The Least Dangerous Game. We're here to talk all about it. But first, as always, a warning. We're setting a course for the spoiler zone, listeners. So be warned. We're glad that you've decided to join us. But if you haven't seen the episode, spoilers are incoming. The official synopsis for The Least Dangerous Game is thus, on a tropical paradise planet, Mariner questions Commander Ransom on how he structures his away team. Boimler makes a bold career decision. And that is way too poor of a description, but we will get into the events of the episode as we go. It was up, it, The episode was written by Garrick Bernard and directed by Michael, Michael Mullen. Uh, we are not given an in-universe date or a star date for this, um, but we can just guess that... Uh, you know, clearly Martok is still Klingon Chancellor. Let's just say that during the reign of uh, Klingon Chancellor Martok. Um, of course, the title of the episode references the Richard Connell short story, The Most Dangerous Game, which has got to be one of the most adapted stories ever in Western literature. At least that concept, uh, that concept has been used before on many Star Trek episodes. Often one of our characters is running away from something. Um, it was specifically referenced, I think, in the DS9 episode, Captive Pursuit, where O'Brien meets a species that is uh, prey for another species, Tosk. Um, interesting fact, we talked about Captive Pursuit and uh, its connections to the John Woo film, Hard Target, on one of the episodes of Backtracking. So if you want more talk about the most dangerous game, which is, of course, Aliens or Man, uh, check that out. Have you guys seen Prey? <laughs> Yes. No. One yes, one no. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it's a spinoff of, of Predator, which is a similar idea, too. I got kind of Predator vibes from our uh, alien uh, guest tonight. Um, we have a game in this episode called Batleths and Binochs, uh, which is, of course, <laughs> is uh, very reminiscent of uh, like Dungeons and Dragons or a tabletop game. But also, you guys got the, the Star Trek VHS game vibes from it, right? Do you ever play the VHS Star Trek game? No. Star Trek The Next Generation, a Klingon challenge. Uh, it was that era of like, it wasn't very popular, but like there were like VHS games where you'd like fast forward to a certain point and then a skit or somebody tells you to do something. Okay. Yes, and definitely. I, I'm not 100% sure, um, but it might have been uh, J.G. Hertzler in the, uh, in the game. I, I'm not sure. I know that he has done... Um, there are other, there are other games like Star Trek Borg and Star Trek, uh, Klingon, uh, computer games that he's done as well. Uh, J.G. Hertzler, of course, reprises his role as Martok in this episode. This is his first appearance on screen as Martok since the DS9 finale, What You Leave Behind, 23 years ago. Wow. Where's all the time go? Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Uh, he of course (laughs) appeared in the first season of Lower Decks in the episode Terminal Provocations as the Drukmani captain. And I can't think of any other facts. Uh, oh, um, I was, was going to mention that uh, Nolan North, famed voice actor Nolan North, appears in this episode as Lars Lundy and also as Cranch, the character that we see. <laughs> so uh, what would you guys think? What would you think about the least dangerous game? Um, I was happy to see Martok again. Yeah. Um, because I really loved him uh, in DS9. Uh, I think you get to know him pretty well. Um, it, it was pretty funny, although I guess it's like a uh, Ferengi yeah. knockoff of F- him. Ferengi black market. <laughs> when you order uh, him from Wish, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> the so same I, don't, version. I don't know how that works. Do they have like a Ferengi like dress up as Martok or do they like <laughs> – have his likeness and then oh, have a Ferengi. That would have been voice better. That would have been way better. Well, I, I was thinking about this. It's obviously they're trying to, you know, reference the VHS game or, or just D and D, but they have holodecks. Do people really sit down and like roll dice, you know, and, and sit at a board? I guess so. Um, you know, it, it's funny that like pads helped inspire like iPads and like tablets now. But I feel like tablets and the way that we use them has gone back now and inspired uh, Star Trek because they're using it for this game. Um, The whole time, every time, and it's funny, but like every time Ransom is talking to Billups on the planet, they're FaceTiming. And you would never see that in like TNG. It would just be like, Mr. Mr. Billups, you know, what's what's your situation? They just say it to the ceiling, you know, but now they're like looking at their screen. So it's it's just kind of interesting. But like, yeah, it's like when Ransom... 
looked up like the YouTube tutorial of how to yeah. make the space elevator. Right, yeah. That cracked me up too. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, this show is just every single part of this show is like the funniest joke they could have possibly made. I love you know the, I, mean? I love the fact that the, the bikini, um, uh, pleasure people with the sentient volcano god like also have a space elevator. It's like you know, no, no, we we, we know how to <laughs> yeah. do that. We can do. They gotta that. get up there though. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, they had a lot going on. They had a telepathic baby and a volcano god too. So there was there was a lot happening on this planet. I know. At first, time I was like, oh, "Are we doing Joe versus the volcano? Like, is that what's happening?" And then I was like, "No, now there's a baby and a robot. We're doing yeah, <laughs> doing yes. something else. It's Star Trek." Uh, speaking of doing things, <laughs> were they just doing uh, Jim Carrey's Yes Man? Have you yes. guys seen the 2009 Jim Carrey <laughs> film Yes Man? Yes, where he just Jim Carrey he plays. Has, he has to say yes to everything. Jim Carrey right? plays a Jim Carrey character, a Jim character, and he decides that he's too much of a doormat, and so he's going to say yes to everything, and he ends up on this like long spree of like this crazy night. And he meets a manic pixie dream girl, literally the manic pixie dream girl, Zoe Deschanel. And they go on a crazy adventure where he has to say yes to everything. Um, I kind of got those vibes off of this. But I thought it was interesting that, like, um, they make the point early on, or Tendi tries to make the point. I'm not sure if Boiler learns the lesson, that he's kind of, like, in his own way. Like, he's getting in his own way in terms of his advancement. Like, he... You know, he reads all the logs and he does all the jobs and he requests overtime. But when it comes down to it, like people don't like him. And we've kind of seen that before. But the guy comes by and he's like, hey, you want to you know, play some spring ball? And he's like, no, screw you. I hate that. And she's like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Like you're kind of like getting in your own way here. I thought that was uh, interesting. Well, he was like really yeah. rude to the guy. Too. Yeah, right. It's like you could have just said and the guy even said you could have just said no. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of. Why does everything remind me of 30 Rock? But it reminded me of um, the episode where, you know, Liz is talking about like her horrible childhood. But the more she thinks about her flashbacks and like her time with her friends, she realizes that she was like the bitchy, like bully in her friend group. And so we go back and we see all the uh, the flashbacks from her perspective. And she's like, sure, whatever. And all of her friends are like, oh, she's so mean to us. Like, Why doesn't anybody <laughs> like me? Boiler uh, in this episode I felt like was giving the other day I was playing like um a board game with my friends and I'm an only child and they were like Ella you're playing too fair you have to cheat <laughs> a little and I was like what do you mean I love that and I feel like that's Boimler he's doing everything too perfect <laughs> like and we were playing like throw throw burrito which like is kind of a there's a lot going on and so I need to, I got I need to be a little bit more aggressive. Like I need to be a little more more, more crunch. But sure, yeah. That's what I feel like. Boy, Boy is giving like only child playing by the rules too much. Yeah, the hunt has already I can begun. See that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Crunch was <laughs> Crunch was funny. Uh, it was interesting. Um, I loved his evil selfie stick. Uh, me too. That to, that made me laugh. It's a good gag. He's pulling this horrible thing out. No, what's gonna happen? And then click. It's it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Um, and you have to wonder, I mean, like, you know, it's a cartoon, it's a comedy. You never think that they're like too in danger, um, but you have to kind of believe it a little bit. But I was wondering, like, why would the, we, I just, um, we just talked about uh, uh, Nemesis on um, uh, Enterprising Individuals. And at one point they're talking about like the Sona and like, yeah, they have slave labor and they use illegal weapons. And Troy's like, why are we talking to these people? Like, why are we doing deals and hanging out with these guys? They're horrible. And so, like, why would the Federation, like, you know, want, like, a giant, vicious predator race with all these crazy weapons? And they're like, oh, no, you know, we just, like, eh, no, I got them. Selfie stick. All right, we're going to get you to the hospital real quick. Boop, boop. They're going to wand it up. This just is how we, how we do our thing. Uh, same thing yeah, with Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like Lower Decks takes advantage of, like, yeah, they can just go to the they can go to sick bay and the magic wand gets waved and your paper cuts fixed. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Stab wand, no problem. I, I'm being stabbed for fun. This is a recreational stabbing. <laughs> and you get that with the uh, with the leisure people too. Like things advance pretty far. <laughs> but I have to wonder if uh, they would have been uh, okay if uh, if ransom didn't come in. But ransom comes in and ransom kind of kirks it a little bit. You know, he kind of comes in and he's like. How do they, these people do that? We're going to do it more. And he 
and tears his shirt off and he's like, no, listen, listen to me. And they're like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Tell us more. I'm like, that guy's a rip. Yeah. That's how, uh, <laughs> that's how Kirk would have handled it. Although he'd have to <laughs> it is. talk the, Kirk proud. he'd have to talk the computer to death. Uh, then he'd have to, uh, you know, uh, make the baby cry, uh, and then have the enterprise shoot the volcano. Uh, and then, yeah, that's how we get all that done. <laughs> but yeah, a uh, lot, lot going on. Do you guys like, uh, speaking of Star Trek 2009, do you like the um, orbital skydiving scene? Yeah, that I was, did. yeah. I actually, okay, when Mariner had to, like, climb all the way back up, that the was The aborted orbital diving, skydiving scene where she's yes. got to stop and go back up. Yeah. That yeah. was actually pretty funny. And and especially when it, like, changes into, like, um, the rock climbing oh, man, it's a climbing wall. wall. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, gosh, dang, these people who are exercise. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I, um, I liked seeing the uh, cetacean ops again. I mean, I like the fact that it was – they're committed to it and it's just not just a one-off joke. And so uh, we see – like, don't have any with your dirty shoes. Yeah, <laughs> it's not cool, man. Come on. <laughs> no manners on that guy. Because he's such a drama <laughs> – such a drama magnet. Boimler is kind of a drama magnet. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like honestly, out of all four of our main characters, he's kind of a drama magnet. Yeah. <laughs> also, but don't you love him for it? Yeah. yeah. You gotta love it. You gotta love a guy who's like, you know what? Yes, I will be hunted. Yes, that's the right thing to do. <laughs> Go ahead and hunt me. Um, other than that, uh, another, uh, um, fairly plotty episode. Um, I don't think to the episode's detriment at all, but, um, I feel like they're, I don't know. I feel like they're really trying to give us, um, bite-sized, you know, half hour kind of Star Trek experiences, you know, with, with jokes. Whereas in the past, I feel like sometimes it's just the whole thing's been kind of a, a lark or there's been some character stuff, but it's like. Here's another plot that you've got an A plot and a B plot. It, it felt, you know, very 90s kind of Star Trek-y, which I guess, you know, is the goal. Yeah, yeah I feel it like did. This season, I'm like, I, you're right. It's not like the whole episode is like one big joke where I'm laughing the whole time. You know, I feel like I'm, there's less guffawing. Yeah. And I think last week <laughs> I'm I met- enjoying myself. Yeah. I think I mentioned last week, um, Mika wasn't here, but um, that I don't watch the Orville, but I wonder how it compares or contrasts to the Orville, which is ostensibly like comedy uh, Star Trek, and how I've heard from people who do watch the Orville that it's gotten less like, you know, pointedly funny uh, as the show has gone on. And they're just basically just doing like Star Trek episodes now. So for good or bad. Hmm. I would love to see like a straight a lower decks episode. Like I would love to just, like start the episode thinking like, oh, it's still gonna be ha ha funny, and then do a full like, is it episode four of the? I've only seen a few episodes of the Orville, but is it episode four where it's like the it's the thing with that baby, like the kid and the like aliens who do like the sex change operation on the babies or something? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it goes like full serious, like very Star Trek, like an amazing episode of television mm-hmm. like i would love to see lower decks just like turn on like punch us in the gut episode five of moon night you know what i mean hmm. okay um i felt like uh I, I can't i don't know what the klingon is but the three ships episode was like there was funny stuff in it but it was more no no we have like a specific you know story about like the three characters and they're all sort of like outcasts you know in uh, misfits and how they sort of deal with that and that that seemed like um that same kind of thing like no this is a this is a star trek episode um but i mean you know whatever just bring the bring the sex planet back bring the whale people back it's just lower I was decks. Gonna say, also we it have be whatever so it, it wants to be star trek it doesn't need yeah i'm not yeah it doesn't yeah. need to be serious I, th- I do i think that mike mcmahon and the squad could make me ball my eyes out like yeah <laughs> they don't need to and frankly maybe they shouldn't yeah, I would love another season of Ha Ha Funny. Yeah, but I I think that it, you're. I think that you make a good point about like, oh, what if they're taking this turn? Yeah, and also, you know, the end of last season was um, 
you know, everything's fun and we, we figured out the problem and then Meredith's mom's in jail and it's like, I know. Ha ha. Like I don't, it doesn't, I don't know how to laugh ha, at that. Honey? Yes. This, is this serious now? This is a joke. But it all resolved uh, again in a big uh, sex party orgy. So uh, good way to end all the, all the conflicts. Um, anything else you guys can think of? I mean, I th- it's a pretty straightforward episode. I thought it was, um, you know, I thought it was pretty successful. Um, all around. Anything you guys can think of? Um, stuff we forgot, things you wanted to bring up. I like that the captain is like, oh, not on my ship, about like somebody be- hunting Boimler. <laughs> and then she finds out who it is and she immediately calls it off. Yeah. Because she had brunch with the guy. Yeah. And uh, of course, brunch is the funniest sounding meal you can share <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> So, you know, and then I love that he's like, like crawling around on the ceiling and like thanking her for the most. <laughs> cranch was really getting me. Like, I was like, yeah. I don't know if I feel like I am Cranch or if I want to be Cranch, but <laughs> he was serving. <laughs> uh, I also like how um, apparently like being hunted or something is, is a common enough occurrence on the Cerritos that she barely breaks stride with her iPad and she's like, Oh no, that's not a security. Okay. We got to take care of that. You know, she just kind of <laughs> keeps going. She doesn't like <laughs> run and grab a phaser to stop uh, what's going on. She's like, no, no, they'll take care of it. Um, <laughs> is brunch the funniest meal? It's funny sounding brunch i'm blanking on a bunch of meals now i mean breakfast sounds kind of weird i've but always thought not... calta plata sounds like a funny meal that does sound like a funny meal i don't know what that means mm. but I, What's, I what will... meal has the most k sounds in it kentucky fried chicken no that's only two oh. k sounds <laughs> that, caramel I mean, that corn a... caramel corn and Actually, uh, Hulk Hogan's Pasta Mania. That's probably the funniest one. We got it. No, no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, if... Yeah, Gary's Flavor Town. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's oh, pretty good, sure. too. Yeah. Yeti. Yeah. Uh, din- diner, diners, drives, dip, You guys drinks, ever go on DoorDash drops. and they're like, do you want to go to Flavor Town? And it's like, no. What? <laughs> no, no what? I'm good. I'm it's good. like not a real restaurant yeah. where you can go. They're like, but they're like, we'll deliver it. We'll deliver oh, Flavor Town okay. to you. All right. Flavor Town's oh, coming you. to me. Okay. That's... <laughs> That's yeah. Fine. yeah, but I don't think I want it to. <laughs> Will they bring Flavor Town to you? Um, I'm, a, I'm a little terrified because Flavor Town comes with flames, you know, and I'm not exactly <laughs> sure I'm ready for that. Um, I I don't want to eat from a ghost kitchen. Whenever no. I whenever I go on an app, I'm always That's scared because it. It, like you know they got like Mr. Beast Burger, and it's like, does Mr. Beast have restaurants? No, yeah. he just. He no. just has Buca de Beppo will make a burger in the back of their kitchen and then send it to you. And it's like, ah, oh my I'm, gosh. I'm good. That doesn't, yeah. Going to no. skip skip the trip to Flavortown on this one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though. If I went on there and they were like, do you want some food from 10 forward? I'd be like, yep. Okay, oh, I'll yeah, take actually. One yeah. Of All right, never mind. Everything. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm in. I will I... sell out corporate cheap. <laughs> I would like a drink mixed by Guinan. Yes, please. Troy's Capitalism. Triple, triple fudge sundae. Yeah. Captain yes. Kirk's uh, chicken chicken sandwich and a coffee. And yeah, the whole thing. Participate in, in Worst prune juice. Only when it's sponsored by Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing if not loyal. Well, uh, that is it for our show this week. And thanks for joining us, listeners. If you like what you hear, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at E-I-S-T-P-O-D to get updates, to get notified when new episodes of both Discoverage, this show, and Enterprising Individuals, our main show, are released. You can tweet to us on the show by using the hashtag Discoverage or email us at E-I-S-T-P-O-D at gmail.com. And while you're on the internet, why not head to your listening platform of choice and subscribe to our show feed. Give us a rating and a review because it really does help us out. Discoverage will return on September 8th for the third episode of the third season of Lower Decks. We don't have a title for that episode just yet, but we will be here that Thursday to cover it. We'll be going live once again at 8 p.m. Central or thereabouts. So join us then. You can follow us on Twitter or Facebook to get notified when we're live and broadcasting. In the meantime, why not check out our main show, Enterprising Individuals, at enterprisingindividuals.com. Every Wednesday on the show, I and a special guest discuss in excruciating detail 
a selected episode from a Star Trek series. And this year on the show, we're talking about the films of Star Trek. And we are up to uh, the Nemesis show hasn't come out yet. That'll be soon. And then it's on to the J.J. Abrams films. We have news from the Trek sphere as well and interviews with special guests. And you can find the show wherever you get your podcasts or at enterprisingindividuals.com. And let me also recommend the other Star Trek show on our network. It's called Backtrekking, and on it, I and my co-host, Gooey Fame, discuss the origins of your favorite Trek episodes. Uh, like I said before, we talk about Captive Pursuit and Hard Target, uh, two things that uh, one didn't inspire the other, but they're both inspired by the most dangerous game. Uh, and that's the sort of, uh, sort of thing we talk about. Our most episode, uh, excuse me, our most recent episode just dropped. And on it, we talk about the Voyager episode Bliss and the Star Trek Prodigy episodes Dreamcatcher and Terra Firma. Uh, two episodes where the crew almost becomes a snack, a not funny snack for a hungry alien. Uh, you can hear that show wherever you get your podcasts or find it at at Backtrekking on Twitter. Ella, thanks as always for joining me to talk about tonight's episode of Lower Decks and remind people where they can find you online. Um, my home podcast is Generations Geek, but I think if anyone's watching Rings of Power, they should listen to the Keep on Tolkien podcast. Mm -hmm. And I was just texting uh, with one of the hosts, Danny, this week, and I'm gunning for a guest spot this season. Nice. Um, so awesome. I'm sure that in, I'm sure in about 20 minutes, once they finish watching the two episodes, that they're going to record for like three hours yeah. and have some good content out. So that's what everyone should listen to. Uh, cool. Check that out. Also, Mika, thank you for joining us on the show tonight and remind people where you can, they can, where people can find you online. I think. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Mikan Hana on Twitter and justenoughtrope.com and, uh, search for Sailor Noob wherever you can find podcasts. And what are you talking about on the next episode of Just Enough Trope? Uh, we are talking about the rings of power. <laughs> <laughs> How are they going to match that uh, that Howard Shore score? That's what I want to know. You can't. I don't know if that's possible. Can't yeah. Do it. Might as well have uh, a guy with a kazoo. The Howard Shore score. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> uh, kazoo. Me, me on the harmonica when I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Just a happy little Harfoot playing the kazoo. Yeah. So uh, check that out. Uh, you can find me at at K-A-1-I-B-A-N on Twitter or all the shows on the Just Enough Trope Network at at Just Enough Trope on Twitter. And that is it for us. We will see you soon. And until then, keep on trekking.